Lisa was born and immediately admitted to the NICU, she had an omphalocele, which was repaired within one day. On day about three or four, she developed neck. They ended up opening her up. She got an ileostomy, which was not repaired for about three months. She developed a severe skin rash. They had to repair it early because they were not able to keep those bags on her. Um, it was sometime in December that they closed her up, and she was great. Everything after that worked fine. She had a tongue reduction surgery when she was about a year and five months old. And from there on, she really had nothing but just prevention until she was about 16. That's when she had two ball obstruction. One was relieved just by NG2 placement. And um, when they, the first time did a CT scan, they found a teratoma, which then was removed three months after the initial uh, ball obstruction. And then for some reason, about five, six months later, she developed another severe bowel obstruction, which had to be open. Had, she had to be open. It was not laparoscopically possible to be relieved. And since then, we're okay. I remember as soon as I could think straight after having her. Um, the internet wasn't anything what it's today, but there was possibility to research things. And I just tried to find what I could. And it, being able to share with people that have babies now, saying it's going to be OK. It's hard. It's you know not the road that you planned on, but it's a, wor it's a road worth going. My mom really, every time we went to the hospital, she would tell me what was going on as soon as I knew what was going on. And I feel like it was pretty, pretty normal reaction from the rest of the family. They were pretty supportive, no real negative reaction, so. Yeah, I mean, um, on my 18-week anatomy scan, they found out that she had an omphalocele, and from there on, pretty much everybody was just concerned. You know, first baby, you're worried. You don't know what's going on. And then the preeclampsia and the eclampsia and all that. And then um, pretty much, I mean, everybody was supportive. Everybody was helping with trying to get the best care, trying to get in contact with St. Louis at that point for the tongue reduction surgery. Everybody was helping financially, too. That was a big concern. Um, specialty formulas, all those things, yeah. Was, uh, the family was overall supportive. We never had anything negative. I started talking to my mom, really, from the beginning, and she always kept me in the loop with BWS. I think I really asked the most questions in high school because um, for one of our senior projects, we had a research paper and I chose the topic of BWS just so I could learn more about it and really talk about something that's really close to me. So that's probably when I asked the most questions about my history and did the most research. But since then, it's just been like, why is this and what are we doing now? And she's, my mom's a nurse, so she knows a lot about that stuff. In school, it was kind of, just like being a normal kid because my uh, limb discrepancy isn't really that noticeable. I didn't really have any other issues growing up. So I feel like for me, it's just been just like a normal childhood apart from the scans. And I would have to be out a lot of times from school because of those doctor's appointments. But it was just like a normal doctor's appointment. I would just come back the next day and my friends would be waiting for me. So it's pretty normal. So I always say, thankfully, she was our first. We could give her 100% of the attention for anything medical, like staying in long hospital stays and everything. I would say that my biggest, biggest accomplishment would be that I'm currently living basically alone, overseas, going to college. I have an associate's degree. I'm going to be a teacher soon. I'm, I'm just really on the path to success, and I'm really proud of that. So. Yeah.